Hey guys, welcome back. If you're at the NRA show this last week, which we were, you may have seen me walk around the show floor with this backpack on. I had this backpack on because it has my rifle in it and I don't wanna leave my rifle in the car. A lot of people didn't know that. I didn't broadcast it obviously, but I wanted to keep my rifle with me. And what I wanna talk about on my rifle is a red dot sight. You've seen this sight quite a bit. I've had a lot of questions about it. And uh, I've not really, in the comments I've answered those questions, but I haven't talked about the site much at all. That's because I have been evaluating the site so I could give you my honest opinion on the site. I'll go ahead and put the rifle here together for you really quick. This is my go-to rifle, if you will. And it does have the echo trigger in it. So to put it together, as I've shown you before, you gotta pull the trigger, close it, and all that good stuff. So here's the site. This is the FC1 from DI Optical. I have two of these sights out here this afternoon, and this little red dot sight has been on my rifle for quite some time. You can see where I've taken a gold Sharpie and marked the T-slots where the sight is so I can take it off and put it back on so it will hold zero. And I've been using this sight for quite a bit. I've been using it for pretty close to a year now. And I think I've come to a conclusion about this sight and its bigger brother, the EG1, which I'll show you here in a few minutes and what I think about it. So this site is made in South Korea. It was originally designed, this family of sites, they were originally designed for South Korean military use, and they seem to be really solid little sites. They're built out of uh, aircraft grade aluminum. They're really rock solid. I think this little site in particular looks really sharp on the gun. Yes, if you flip up your backup sights, you can see your sights through the optic. So yes, it does co-witness for those of you that care. Uh, this one does have a quick detach of sorts. It has a knurled knob on it with a flathead slot, so you can really crank it down or you can just thumb tighten it. Up to you, but if you want to take it off, just thumb tighten it and it will hold zero. So anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of shooting with the gun. I want to talk about the sights a little bit this afternoon, tell you what I think about them, and I'll tell you guys where you can find them if you want one. So let's start off doing a little bit of shooting with the uh, old BCM. I am using some 100 and no, actually, not 100 and some grains. I'm shooting 5.56. I'm shooting some 62 grain remanufactured Freedom Munitions ammunition. I'm shooting remanufactured because a lot of the times I shoot brand new stuff and I want you guys to get an idea of how well the remanufactured stuff works as, as well. So here we go. 30 rounds out of the old Lancer 5 magazine. Got to turn the sight on. It's just a single button. Boom, that's how fast I turned it on. It goes right back to its last brightness setting. Yeah, I love this BCM, guys. That's a hammer comp on there that works this gun so well. It shoots really, really flat. Love the rifle, really enjoy the sight. Let's take a closer look at the DI Optical Red Dot Sights. Well guys, when we were just shooting the opening segment, I just took the rifle out of the bag. Now keep in mind, I keep this rifle with me pretty much everywhere I go. When I travel, it's with me. Even around town, this rifle's always with me. So it gets bounced around quite a bit. We were shooting that opening sequence and Sam noticed that the windage adjustment knob was missing off my Magpul Pro backup sights. I've been using these for a while and honestly, I mean, that's kind of a minor thing, but seriously guys, that should not just fall off just by carrying it around. I shoot the gun a lot. Um, I never use the backup sights, they're truly backup sights. I'm of the opinion that if you have a good red dot sight, you'll probably never need these, but the fact that they just kind of disassembled themselves means that's kind of shoddy assembly or maybe even a shoddy design, I don't know. I'm gonna go to the Griffin sights, that's what I've been using lately. I'm just having a hard time getting more Griffin sights from Griffin Armament, but as soon as I get another pair, I'm gonna actually put them on this rifle. I just thought I'd show, the, show you guys that, that uh, that's a little bit disheartening. The FC1 only takes up about one half inches of rail space, so I really like this little sight. The EG1 is a nice sight, it's a little bit bigger, has a knob for its on-off and its brightness settings, which some of you will like. This has a single button that does everything, but we'll get that to that here in a second. So you'll notice it only takes up about one and a half inches of rail space, so it's nice and small. You can adjust the height by changing out the spacers. I have mine set to a fairly high sight, but still co-witnesses. 
And you can also use this big knurled knob here as a quick detach mount system if you want. It does have slots cut in it for a flathead screwdriver so you can crank it down if you don't plan on taking it off. But you can also just thumb tighten it and it'll stay zeroed and stay on the gun if you, if you, you know, crank it down fairly tightly with just a finger tightening, tightening the sight using a knurling. So on the back of the sight, we have a single button. The single button turns the sight on and off and it also cycles it through its 14 brightness settings. It has seven settings for night vision and it has seven settings for daylight settings. I've never used it with any of the night vision that I have, uh, but you know I, I would assume it would work just fine. I just don't do a whole lot of night vision shooting with sights like this. But the button's very easy to use. It's just one simple button. You press and just one quick press. You don't have to hold it any set amount of time. So if you grab the rifle, hit the button, boom, the sight comes on. To turn it off, you press and hold it. To cycle through the brightness settings, you just keep touching the button. Now the sight will automatically shut off after 10 hours. I've used this sight now for about a year. I've had it on this rifle, a few others, but primarily on this one. I wanted to really beat up on it. This one has the echo trigger system in it, and it has not failed me or lost zero at all. As a matter of fact, I haven't had to change the battery either. And I've been, been using this sight a lot. As you guys probably know, you'll, you'll have seen it in a number of videos. Every time I take this rifle out, of course, it has a sight on it. Now, that having been said, it has about a 5,000 hour battery life, and in the course of this last year, I haven't had to change the battery yet. So I'm just gonna keep running it until it dies. So far, no problem. Now, over here on the left-hand side of the site, it does have a battery compartment right here. Now, this is one of my early concerns about the optic when I first took it out of the box. It has two screws holding a sliding battery tray and that has just a flat CR 2032 battery in it. I was concerned that these screws would back out. I don't like screws on sights. I don't like screws on anything on a rifle unless it's Loctited or you know safety wired or something. Now these are not Loctited, they're just torqued down. You can kind of see the, the battery compartment bowing a little bit. And I think that's giving it just enough tension to keep those screws in place. They have not backed out. As a matter of fact, you can see some other tiny screws here. They're just part of the construction of the site and they've not backed out either. We've lost a screw off the Magpul sights already, but we haven't lost a screw out of the uh, FC1. The FC1 has 40 minutes of adjustment up and down, and you can, you can accomplish that adjustment through the elevation right here on the top of the sight, and then around on the back of the sight, you'll have another screw that you can adjust your windage. And I have successfully done that with, uh, with just the rim of a case. So it's very easy, it does have very positive clicks, and uh, it's very easy to adjust for zero. Now the sight is a prism type sight, and it does have a two MOA dot. I will say that when you start to get the brightness just a little too bright, you'll see blooming around the edge of the screen. The dot itself will always bloom. I've seen very few dots, aim points, trigicons, they all bloom a little bit. The dot itself as you turn the brightness up. And what blooming means is you get that fuzzy edge around the dot. I've noticed with these sights that if you get the brightness past what's necessary for ambient light conditions, you'll actually see a red line around the outer edge. I've not found it to be distracting at all, but I have seen it. I'll try to get a picture of it to show you guys what I'm talking about. I may not be able to get a picture of it. So that does happen. But uh, again, I haven't found it to be distracting. At first, I really was concerned about it. I contacted the guys at DI Optical to make sure the site wasn't defective. They said, no, that's just normal because of the prism type site that it is. Uh, that, that's kind of something you can't really get around. And so, yeah, it is what it is. You'll notice that on the front of the lens, I don't want to muzzle Sam here, but you'll notice on the front of the lens, you don't have any really deep colors. So if you look at the front of most uh, RDSs out there on the market, you'll notice that lens has a pink or a, uh, a colored hue to it. And that's because it's, it's firing the laser at that glass and then reflect, reflecting it back to your eye. This site does not do this. This is a prism site, it does not do that. So you don't have that color shift going on. So when you look through, uh, an aim point T1 micro or an aim point 30 millimeter optic, you know, like the, the comp M2s or M4s or whatever, or even the Trigicon MRO, you'll notice a bit of a color shift when you look through the sight. You're not gonna see that color shift with this particular optic, which some of you may like. I've never really cared about the color shift. I've not noticed it, but I've seen people complain about it on the forums with the other red dot sights. The site comes to market at right around $490, that's full retail, and you can pick them up at Optics Planet. I will put a code down below uh, for Optics Planet. It's, a, it's MAC5, I believe is the code. I'll have to look it up and put it in the video. I do not get any kickbacks from Optics Planet. They've just negotiated uh, a, a special price or discount for my viewers. Optics Planet does not sponsor me and they do not give me any kickbacks on the use of that code. It's for you guys as a thank you for watching the channel. So anyway, now let's take a look at the EG1, which is the, this site's bigger brother, and do a little bit of shooting with it on a rifle I think you guys are going to enjoy. All right, guys, I've never had the chance to shoot the Fostec Echo Trigger. 
Uh, so I'm going to take the advantage while I'm out here on the range with Tim and, and shoot it. And you guys get to come along for my first try. We'll try it a little semi-auto first. All right, so it should be double that speed, I'm guessing. All right, that was weird and awesome. Uh, I guess I gotta get used to the feel, but there you go. I guess uh, once you're a little more used to it, you can do straight up machine gun style mag dumps and like, in a, like Tim likes to call it the, uh, the NFA nut kicker of a trigger. That one along with the pistol braces just really negates anything like that. But cool, Fustic Outdoor Echo Trigger. Wearing that target out at 100 yards. All right, guys, let's take a look at the EG-1. This is the bigger brother to the FC-1. The EG-1 is still made out of the same aircraft-grade aluminum. It is a little bit bigger sight. Actually, it's almost twice the size in terms of weight, where the FC-1 is six ounces. This one's about 12 ounces. It does have these rubberized hoods that are, that are kind of uh, shade guards so that it keeps light from entering the prism-type sight. Again, this is a prism-type sight that has a two MOA dot. The sight has the adjustments for windage and elevation right here on the right-hand side. You can also see this large knurled knob. All right, so this is much bigger and it's a little bit easier, gives you a little bit more mechanical advantage to make this thing really crank down. It does have flats for a screwdriver, but you're not gonna need them. This really is a quick detach type mount that's on this system. You will notice over here, that you have a battery compartment that is also your brightness setting and your power switch. So for those of you guys that, that like the aim point style uh, adjustment, like a T1, T2, this is gonna be very familiar to you. It's on the left-hand side of the site and you have big clear numbers that you can, it can tell you your brightness setting. So you have zero to 14 settings on this one as well. And it actually looks pretty sharp on the gun. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, but I think that the 30 millimeter screen, I believe the other one is a 24 millimeter, I'll have to look that up, but this one's a 30 millimeter screen. Again, it does not have that colored coating on it that you'll find on a lot of other red dot sites. That means it gives you a very big, bright field of view. The blooming doesn't seem to be something that I really encounter with this site as much as I do with the smaller FC one around the edges when I have the brightness too bright. And it's just a great overall sight. And this one's actually a little bit cheaper. This one has a retail price of $470. And again, I believe these are for sale at Optics Planet. Uh, I know the FC1s are. And again, that same discount code would apply. So again, if you have flip up sights, backup sights, you can flip those up and co-witness easily through this. You will notice though that it has a fixed base and that base is not adjustable for height. So it kind of is what it is, but I found that with flip up iron sights, you can co-witness if you so desire, but you also have the ability to just simply unscrew the knob and get the sight off should you have some sort of contaminant get on the lens that you can't see, see through the sight for whatever reason. If the sight just simply goes down, you can flip up your iron sights. So let's go ahead and shoot it. The gun that I have it on is my CZ. This is my 805 Bryn. It is an SBR. This started life as a pistol. And uh, I bought the conversion kit and filed my Form 1. Gosh, I bet, I bet I've had this thing close to two years now. And uh, yeah, I don't show it in video very often, but I put this sight on here because I think it looks really sharp with the angles and the lines of the Bren. And the Bren is just an awesome rifle to shoot. I do have a Griffin armament muzzle device on here. I do run this gun suppressed and it runs just fine. Um, but it has that weird 14 by one right hand thread on it. So finding a muzzle device for this gun is a little bit hard. You'll notice you'll see threads back here. I had to butt the, uh, the muzzle device up against the face of the barrel and with a 5.56 can on it, it's the, the threads or something aren't concentric or because how it's engaging with the face of the barrel. I'm running a 30 caliber can, a Recce 7, when I use it um, because I, I, when I run a, a Geisley alignment rod down it, it looks like it might want to touch and not want to baffle strike. So I just run a 30 caliber can on it when I do suppress it. All right, let's see. We have one magazine here of the 62 grain Freedom Munitions remanufactured stuff. And I'm gonna show you how this little sight works. I really do like it. Now, it, the trade-off is, is the size and the weight of it but it really does give you a much larger field of view. It's more like an EOTech in terms of how it feels. 
Now, I really like the FC1 because it has a very small footprint. When you look through some red dot sites, you'll have big knobs and stuff hanging off the side, and this site's kind of guilty of that. It's kind of distracting when I looked at that FC1. Really, when I, I think back in my mind's eye, I just remember seeing the dot. I don't really see the really thin outline of the site around that red dot. This one's a little bit bigger, but it does have that larger field of view. So let's go ahead and shoot some steel targets downrange about 100 yards. And I just love the way the rifle shoots. This thing is one of my favorite 5.56 five, guns. Yeah, that's pretty freaking awesome, man. This little gun shoots great. There's a steel target about 100 yards away, and I'm just wearing that target out with this setup. The sight works great. I like the fact that I can make adjustments very quickly. I am familiar with that type of adjustment that's very much like what you'll find on other popular sites. And having the battery compartment that's O-ring sealed is pretty nice. Now, I will say that both of these sights are capable of being submerged to about 10 feet underwater. So they are waterproof to about 10 feet of water. So if you're getting rain on them, if you drop it in a mud puddle, whatever, you're not gonna have a problem with the site. I've been very hard on these sites. I mean, I've not taken care of them at all. And uh, I bang them around like I, I do just about everything I have. And these sites have held up just fine. So I'm not, uh, I'm not capable of breaking them, I don't think. The sights seem to work really, really well, but they're made out of aluminum. But one thing that you may like also on this particular site, if those screws bother you, like the ones on the FC1, this site doesn't have those. This site has just that one big battery compartment with the O-ring seal on it that you'll find on pretty much every other RDS on the market. And again, 470 bucks. Well guys, it's time to wrap things up this afternoon and head back to the house and do some video editing. But I hope you enjoyed coming out and taking a look at the DI Optical Red Dot Sights. I really like this FC1. It's been a very good companion to my BCM rifle. It's been very durable. It's held up just fine. And uh, you guys know that I'm pretty hard on optics. I like to bang them around. I don't take very good care of my guns or my sights. Uh, I, I, I just use them like they're supposed to be used. And the sight has really impressed me. Again, I've had it for about a year on this rifle. Uh, I've, I've had it out in the rain. I've had it out in the heat. I've had it out in the snow and I've not had any issues with the sight whatsoever. I did try to get a picture through the sight to kind of show you that little bit of a red line that you might see around the edges on a real bright setting, but it's almost comical. I'll just roll that picture in. <laughs> Guys, I did not Photoshop this dot. That sharp dot is just how the camera took the picture. That was at its brightest setting, and it does not look like there's any blooming. It looks razor sharp around the edge. I can assure you that's not what it looks like when you actually look through it, but uh, it's a very clean, crisp to MOA dot at its proper brightness setting which is correct for current ambient lighting conditions. Overall, the sights come to market at about the same price as you'd find a Trijicon MRO. They are military grade optics and they are waterproof. They're shock proof, it would seem, and they do hold up well. If you like the looks of them, again, I really like the way this FC1 looks on here. As a matter of fact, I even like how the EG1 looks on the Bren here. I'm gonna wind up probably leaving this sight on this particular SBR. It's, uh, it's, it's a good, rugged little sight. So again, about the same price as a Trijicon, MRO, you're going to find that it does have some advantages. It's going to have, um, you know, pretty decent battery life. Again, one year in with this site with constant use. I haven't changed the battery just yet, and uh, it's going to hold up pretty well. And 
you know, you don't have to worry about that color shift problem. I know a lot of guys complain about that. It doesn't personally bother me. I still like my MROs and my, my aim points, but uh, some folks really care about that color shift. It is a parallax free sight. And overall, I think they're a pretty darn good quality sight and not at a horrible price. They're not, you know, Chinese sites at, you know, $200, you're gonna pay about twice that for them, but uh, they are definitely good quality sights. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and dump one more round of this Freedom Munitions before we get out of here. I'm gonna do it in echo mode. If you guys would like to support the channel, the best way to do that right now with all the issues we're having with YouTube is to swing by and donate a buck or two to our Patreon page. I'll put a link down below to Patreon. You can also swing by and check us out at Copper Custom, and that's our online store. So if you'd like to support the Military Arms channel, please swing by, check out Copper Custom. And if you haven't already, guys, do please swing by and check out Full 30, which is an online firearms community. It's full30.com, full30.com. If you want to support the Second Amendment, you don't want to see Tampex commercials, swing by, check them out. All your favorite gun channels are over there. We'll talk to you guys th soon. And uh, again, thanks for all those years of watching. Bye, guys. <laughs> Woo. Too much fun. We're out of here. Attempt number two for mag dump with the Fostec Echo Trigger. Here we go. Tim said I gotta, I gotta pull it hard but steady. Those are the instructions and we'll see how well I follow them. All right, here we go. All right, we still got a lot of work there. You can probably see my finger like doing like this. I'm trying to, it's a weird feel, man. It's, uh, for the guys that are used to, uh, like an SSAE or a Super Dynamic 3 gun from Geisley or just a really nice crisp single stage, it's absolutely nothing like that at all, actually. It's this uh, this very deliberate, like spongy, but not in a bad way, like a, like a hard sprung pull, and then almost pushes your finger like this and you can get into a rhythm, but Tim's got it, I don't quite have it yet. We'll keep trying. <laughs>